want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockouts it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA, so it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced, and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com, or call 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now... Okay. Welcome back. We're live here with the debate, and they're asking Ben Carson the tough question about profiteering, the case of the CEO trying to raise the price of pharmaceuticals. Let's see what he has to say. Small manufacturer, whatever they're manufacturing, drugs or anything, if they have less than 50 employees, the average cost in terms of regulations is $34,000 per employee makes it a whole lot easier for them to want to go somewhere else. So what we're going to have to start doing, instead of you know, picking on this group or this group, is we're going to have to have a major reduction in the regulatory influence that's going on. The government is not supposed to be in every part of our lives, and that's what's causing the problem. Thank you, Dr. Carson. This is from a guy who wants to have forced vaccinations and wants to increase the drug war. Some bank executives <laughs> we need less government have gone to jail for the 2008 financial crisis. But General Motors paid more than $1 billion in fines and settlements for its ignition switch defect. 124 people died as a result of these faulty switches. No one went to jail. As a former prosecutor, do you believe the people responsible for the switch and the cover-up belong behind bars? You bet they do. And this if I were intense. the prosecutor, that's yeah. exactly where they'd be. Uh, the, the fact is that this Justice Department under this president um, has been a political Justice Department. It's been a Justice Department that's decided that they want to pick who the winners and losers are. They like General Motors, so they give them a pass. They don't like somebody else like David Petraeus, they prosecute them and send a decorated general um, to disgrace. It's a political oh, really? justice department. You don't think you deserve that? Yeah, Jim, you know I think well. they should have done more to David Petraeus. I think we they should do the same to Hillary Clinton. We went after companies that yeah. were ripping off shareholders. Oh, yeah. We went after companies that were doing See, things. That he's were doing the same thing he just said about it. He likes David Petraeus, so give him a pass. Hey, you know, he shared uh, documents with his mistress. So what? You know? She served under him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> For, again, does anybody out there think that giving Washington, D.C. the opportunity to run the pharmaceutical industry is a good idea? <laughs> I mean, given how well they've done running the government? So what we do, though, is if there's somebody who's price gouging, we have laws for prosecutors to take that on. Let's let a justice department, and I will make an attorney general. Here's what the Republicans, the so-called free market guys, won't say. And we talked about this this last weekend. Thank you, Governor Christie. Why is it 
that he could charge so much money? Why could he charge $13.50 a pill for something that has been in the public domain that didn't have a patent for decades? Why could he then raise it by 5,000%? Because there was no competition. Why was there no competition? Because of FDA regulations. And that's what they need to address, but they won't address that part of it. And they won't ask, they'll say this is a problem of the free market, so we need less freedom. The reality is that we don't have a free, a free market. We've got the FDA in there telling people what they can and cannot sell. Now we have to accept 2% the new normal for economic growth. And the net result is the middle class has $2,300 less in their pockets than the day that Barack Obama got elected president. And now they see Hillary Clinton proposing a third term of economic policy for, uh, for our country. We need to reverse that. And my record was one of cutting taxes each and every year. You don't have to guess about it because I actually have a record. $19 billion of tax cuts, 1.3 million jobs created. We were one of two states to go to AAA bond rating. And our this is what we expected, was Governor. I created more jobs than anybody in history when I was governor. Point that you made to Congress, <laughs> if you were president and you were offered a bipartisan deal that had one dollar, one dollar of tax increases for ten dollars. You find me cuts, a Democrat? Would you would take go, it? You find me a Democrat that will cut spending ten dollars? Heck, find me a Republican in Congress that would cut spending ten dollars. So you don't I'll want the to coach him. to put you in anymore? We, look, the, the deal was already done. The biggest tax increase happened under the watch of Barack Obama and spending's gone up. You find a Democrat that's for cutting taxes, t cutting spending $10? I'll give him a warm kiss. Thank you, guys. How did your brother do in terms of cutting? Uh, Mrs. Yeah. Fiorina. Yeah, that's ridiculous. In 2010, yeah, right. while running for Senate in Tech Ridge, California, you called an internet sales tax a bad idea. Traditional brick and mortar stores obviously disagree. Now that the internet shopping playing field has matured, what would be a fair plan to even that playing field? You know, I want to go back for a moment to what we were just talking about. Crony capitalism is alive and well and has been so in Washington, D.C. for decades. What's crony capitalism? Crony capitalism is what happens when government gets so big and so powerful that only the big and the powerful can handle it. So why are the pharmaceutical companies consolidating? Why are there five even bigger Wall Street banks now instead of the ten we used to have on Wall Street? Because when government gets big and powerful, the big feel like they need to get even bigger to deal with all that power. And meanwhile, the small and the power less, in this case, 15 Okay, here's a, here's a clue. Everybody needs to go back and use their Google Wayback Machine and take a look at what happened with Hewlett Packard in Israel working on biometric systems to control movement of people going across the, uh, uh, going across the border there of Israel. Hewlett Packard was the only one that was actually working on... Uh, any of these bids. They were the only one that the government would qualify. It was so bad that the Israeli parliament said, we're not going to accept this process. We're going to start this whole thing over again. And somebody else won it. So they, it was EDS systems. So Hewlett Packard bought out EDS systems. <laughs> so we're talking about crony capitalism and how just a few companies on it. Oh, yeah. Exhibit A right here. Hey guys, I just found something pretty interesting on Twitter. Go ahead, go ahead. Some, someone shared a, a Twitter feed by Donald Trump, and this is obviously before the, uh, the debate tonight. But what, what do you make of this? Donald Trump says, how come ISIS never attacks Israel? Because the dog doesn't bite his own tail. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, interesting. And it's, it's also interesting, I, I didn't notice that, uh, or I noticed that the mainstream media never covered that one. Well, you know, they also don't attack Saudi, do they? Saudi Arabia. That's right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep. But they sure do like Senator our weapons. Rubio, you yourself yeah. have said that um, <laughs> you've had issues. You have a lack of bookkeeping skills. Those belong in you my hands. You intermingled campaign money with your personal money. You faced foreclosure on a second home that you bought. And uh, just last year, you liquidated a $68,000 retirement fund. That's something that cost you thousands of dollars in taxes and penalties. In terms of all of that, it raises the question whether you have the maturity and the wisdom to leave a $17 trillion economy. What do you say? Well, you just, you just listed a litany of uh, discredited attacks from Democrats and my political opponents, and I'm not going to waste 60 seconds detailing them all. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Here's the truth. I didn't inherit any money. My dad was a bartender. My mother was a maid. They worked hard to provide us the chance at a better life. They didn't save enough money for us to go to school. I had to work my way through school. I had to borrow money to go to school. Try early in my marriage explaining to my wife why someone named Sally Mae was taking $1,000 out of our bank account every month. I know what it's like to owe that money, and we've worked hard. We've worked hard our whole life to provide a better family, a better life for our family. 
We own a home four blocks away from the place that I grew up in. My but you know what? If he becomes president, he's going to leave like Bill and Hillary Clinton, a multi multi millionaire. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> from zero to multi billionaire. And of course, you know, Donald Trump, same thing will happen to him. He comes in here and, uh, you know, he's, he's only got uh, six to ten million billion dollars. He'll come out quite a bit wealthier. This debate needs to be about the men and women across this country that are struggling on a daily basis to provide for their families the better future that we've always said this country's all about. Senator, I understand all of that. I had a lot of student loans when I got out, too. But you've had a windfall that a lot of Americans haven't. You made over a million dollars on a book deal, and some of these problems came out. And I use it to pay off my loans, and it's available yes, on paperback. You liquidated that retirement account after the fact, and, and that cost you about twenty-four thousand dollars out of that in taxes and fees. That that was after you'd already come into that windfall. That's why I raised the question. Yeah. Again, as I said, we're raising a family in the twenty-first century. And I said I'm not a, a fan of Rubio, family. but like uh, Ted Cruz said, nobody on that panel has any intention of voting for anybody that's on that stage right now. That's right. They just keep coming after him with all these personal attacks and, you know, ridiculous statements like, are you a comic book villain? I mean, How now. dare you write a book and make money off of it? That's evil. Yeah. yeah. This has been the most horrible debate thus far. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, she's going to help him quite a bit in the polls because he did a really good job of spinning this back and saying, yeah, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Mm. But they're not talking about the economy. They're not talking about what they would actually do, the hard choices that they would make because they have to control spending. Ending. Which provides subsidies to help American companies compete with overseas competitors. You call that corporate welfare. One of the largest newspapers in your state uh, wrote an editorial, said they found that strange, writing that if that's corporate welfare, what does Kasich call the millions of dollars in financial incentives doled out to attract or retain jobs by his development effort, Jobs Ohio? If subsidies are good enough for Ohio companies, why aren't they good enough for companies trying to compete overseas? Well, first of all, when we talk about the import-export bank, it, it's time to clean up corporate welfare. If we're going to reform welfare for poor people, we ought to reform it for rich people as well. Secondly, in our state, we went from a loss of 350,000 jobs to now a gain of 347,000 jobs to the there positive. There you go. Talk about jobs. Our wages yep. are growing faster yep. than the national average. And I've cut taxes more than any sitting governor in this state. When I was $5 governor of Lake Wobegon, including <laughs> all of our no economy was above average. Business and killing yeah. the death tax. Now, I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier, this budget deal in Washington. This is the same old stuff once since I left. You spend the money today and then you hope you're going to save money tomorrow. I don't know if people understand. Of course, that, here's the deal. As we said before, a very small percentage of the pie, the income of the federal government, comes from the income tax, right? Where does most of the money come from? Well, it comes from the Federal Reserve. They won't talk about the Federal Reserve. No. They won't talk about how the Federal Reserve is manipulating. They won't ask me questions, and nobody on here will talk about it except perhaps Rand, but they won't get, ask him a question. What I tell you about our incentives, our incentives are tight. And at the end of the day, we make sure... You've only heard Trump speak like maybe once tonight. That's true. Yeah. That's the interesting thing is how little he's had a chance to talk. Well, once again, you know, it's on CNBC. They have no intention to vote for anybody on here. So they're just going to attack the people that they think are weak or going to make a mistake. They don't want to talk to Rubio and Cruz. Yeah, they don't want to talk to Rand. They don't want to talk to uh, Trump. Not even arson that much. It's amazing that Kasich is at zero in the polls, and they have really talked to him more than they have talked to Carson or Trump. Yeah. And I know that you've said you've been very sympathetic to our cause. I think that's because Kasich ripped open his stomach at the beginning of the debate and just basically bled on everybody. <laughs> they're just like, we like this. We need more blood. Well, he's, he's definitely the most Democrat of all the candidates. Turn the economy around for people who are struggling. The Democrats' answer to everything is more government control over wages and more empowering trial lawyers to file lawsuits. You know, you look at working women. I'll tell you, in my family, there are a lot of single moms in my family. My sister was a single mom. Both my aunts were single moms. And my wife my works mom, for Goldman Sachs. Today, hey. was a single mom <laughs> when my father left us when I was three years old. Now, thank God, my father was invited to a Bible study and became born again and he came back to my mom and me and we were raised together but I, the struggle of single moms is extraordinary and you know when you see Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders and all the Democrats talking about wanting to address the plight of working women not a one of them mentioned the fact that under Barack Obama 3.7 million women have entered poverty not a one of them mentioned the fact that under Barack Obama and the big government economy 
The median wage for women has dropped $733. The truth of the matter is, big government benefits the wealthy, it benefits the lobbyists, it benefits the, the giant corporations, and the people who are getting hammered are small businesses, it's single moms, it's Hispanics. That is who I'm fighting for. The people